the words Harlem Globetrotters. An image pops in your head and a familiar song plays in your ears. <laughs> No, Brandon, can you come out here and show me how to do that? Is it the fadeaway? Did you know the Globetrotters have a law? Here he comes. Have a long time to tied to Detroit. <laughs> Thanks to all the talented players that have come up from this area. Photographer Alex Atwell introduces us to one man whose story with the Globetrotters is something that is uniquely Detroit. My name is Ernest Wagner. I was uh, born here in Detroit in 1933. Well, basketball basically became part of my life. I come in contact with a guy named Gus Finney, the recreation instructor down to Brewster. Took us under his wing, but it was special. If you could play down to Brewster, they felt like you could play anywhere. Mr. Finney was an ex-Harlem Globetrotter. They had a great history here, man. A lot of people should, and that history alone should be known guys like uh, Bertie Ziegler, who just passed, Bob Showboat Hall, who just passed. I can name Klein, myself, Charlie Primus. And it's a lot, it's a few more young guys that's been out there after we left, you know. But it's got a great history here. And I got with the Globetrotters, I stayed at almost 12 years, from 54 to 67. Give me a, a sense of back then, as far as just the popularity, what was more popular, the NBA or the Globetrotters? The Globetrotters was more popular, Alex. We were drawing, they wasn't drawing nobody, man. The NBA was about the foe in the 50s. We had Will Chamberlain, we were, we were drawing with, before Will even joined the Globetrotters. When we played our, our double-headed for them, they weren't drawing nobody. You know, they, I remember playing in the Madison Square Garden. We play a game that people would get up and leave for the NBA game. Oh, yeah, yeah, we played, like I said, when we would play against the All-Star, you know, like John Havacek and all them guys, man, with Boston. You see the kind of teams they had? With them guys was on the tour when we would play the World Series of basketball. And the Goldtiders won most of the time. They used to call us clowns, but it was entertainment. How the show came about, a close game, and they start what they call freezing the ball, keeping it away from the other team. And while they start doing this, they start doing little tricks and dribbling and doing that. And the people seen it, fed into it and was enjoying it. They start doing it every night, Alex. And they started adding more. See, a lot of people didn't know the Gold Trotters had so many dates, they had to have three teams. When I went out there in 1954, they had a Western, Eastern, and a Southern unit. Well, they picked me to go to Europe that year, 1955. It was very important because we carried it overseas. You see how it's forming now. I mean, they had never seen basketball back in some of them countries. I think that it was a very good experience for me. I was glad to be part of the Globe Trap because that was really big and important. We did a lot of things for this country. We did a lot of things for the Harlem Globetrotters and the NBA. Cool story, huh? Very cool. And they met the gang from Scooby Doo. I mean, there's a lot <laughs> oh, in the Globetrotters yeah, history. Yeah, the Globetrotters. Globetrotters. Uh, go are ahead. still doing what? They're still touring, right? <laughs> They're still touring the world. I don't think it's the same touring company. I don't yeah. think it, we were joking about that. Metal Lark Lemon and Geese Osby and those guys. No, oh my no, gosh. So Tickets are on sale now for their appearance at the Palace on New Year's Day. The show is at 2 p.m. Tickets start at 20 bucks uh, new this season, the Globetrotters four, four point line. And who wow. was it? The coach of U of D, right? Makari Alexander. Makari Alexander, former Globetrotter, right here still. There you go. Next on Live.